Brussels occupies a central position on the scale of Belgium as on the scale of Europe. It is surrounded on a radius of 300 kilometers by three metropolitan areas with a population in the 10 million inhabitants range. Paris, London, and the Rhine Ruhr region of Germany. Brussels begins its development in the 10th century around the commercial activity related to the port. Very quickly, the city is orientated according to the geography of the ground. The bourgeoise resides down at the east side of the Seine, while the working class settles on the marshy land affected by the epidemics. Each side of the river presents asymmetric hillsides which vary between 0 and 90 meters in altitude. A canal is built as an alternative navigable access to the Seine. The first enclosure of the city is built in the 13th century, particularly including the bank of the Seine and its heights. The second enclosure was built in the 14th century and defined the city's boundary until the 18th century. The city is an island entity defined by its wall, which provides military defense and clearly determines the difference between urban and rural areas. The second enclosure had seven main gates, including Portéal, the only one that survived until today. Once the walls are destroyed, the city will begin a rapid expansion between the slopes and valleys to the current city boundary defined by the Brussels capital region. Brussels has developed an urban structure which is very particular to the northern European cities, a type of closed block referred to as ilo fermé. These are composed of several individual houses, built side by side, following the block's perimeter. One of the most important aspects of this urban typology is that all houses are built with specific long and narrow dimensions. They usually have a garden in the backyard, eaves and two-sided roof. This typology represents the urban DNA of Brussels and has been for centuries at the basis of the development of the city. It is a heritage of the typical medieval urban structure. In the town surrounded by a ring of walls in the 14th century, blocks are built along narrow streets. The limited city has to progressively occupy the resulting free space. The backyards begin to disappear and leave space to new buildings to meet the increasing demand for housing. The expansion of the Ilo Fermé continues from the 18th century when the city starts to expand beyond the ring of walls and the density starts to decrease. This phenomenon is more visible in the periphery. Having more space permits the appearance of green spaces between the streets and the buildings. That leads to a low-density urban fabric. Is this homogeneity still perceivable throughout the city? Brussels is often described as a heterogeneous city lacking a global identity. This can be explained by the heavy interventions that will be successively made in its structure as soon as it becomes the Belgian capital in the 19th century. The walls of the city are quickly replaced by boulevards and in the second half of the century, the influence of Osman's Paris-inspired ideas will heavily scar Brussels. Work on the Seine is underway to put an end to the epidemics it caused in the city centre. Mayor Jules Pack took the opportunity to drill a large north-south axis in the dense urban fabric in hopes to attract the bourgeois towards the centre, but it failed as they preferred to stay in the suburbs. The great destruction required for the piercing of these axes will therefore leave important urban scars without succeeding in creating a new urban dynamic. After the Industrial Revolution, industrial activities will colonize an extensive territory on either side of the canal, causing an east-west break in the city. At the end of the 19th century, King Leopold II marked the urban structure with his ambition 
to develop the city as a capital at the forefront of the international scene. Several axes are developed as part of Victor Besson's master plan. The Leopold du Boulevard, to the Kuckelberg Plateau, and the Mont des Arts, which served as a temporary garden during the Universal Exposition in 1910. In the 60s, it was transformed into a new geometric garden on the square with the addition of large structures such as the Royal Library of Belgium and the Congress Palace alongside it. These axes are surrounded by the second and the third enclosure of the boulevards, like the Boulevard du Souvent, only realized in the eastern part of the city. The first half of the 20th century is marked by the realization of the railway junction between the North Station and the Midi Station to take the burden off the existing railway facilities. After the war, several garden cities were built south of the city in response to this. The 58 exhibition was an inherent part of the urban history of Brussels, with its symbol of the atomium, which represents the modernity and the desire to look towards the future. In this period, we see several modernist projects along with important urban transformations. However, the 60s see the arrival of the car in the city. Major projects are planned, tunnels are dug, and roads are punctured. The vertical construction is implemented. An example is the business center north of the city, the Little Manhattan. At time of construction, the ambitious project was quickly stopped by the economic crisis, and it was realized as planned only recently with the current economic situation. La Cité Modèle, built in the north of the city following the 1958 World Exhibition, illustrates this trend of vertical construction of the second half of the century. Whilst at the same time, the Basilica of Kuckelberg is built to create a monumental urban landmark. Nowadays, the city bears scars of these heavy and destructive urban interventions. The contemporary projects thus adopt opposite behaviors in an attempt to stitch up the fragments of urban fabric and to give the voice back to the inhabitants. The tool of the neighborhood contracts, for example, allows the inhabitants to conceive small quality projects for their neighborhood that can directly provide the local needs. The Ville's is an example of transformation of an old industrial modernist building into a contemporary art museum. Built at the start of the 20th century, it became a landmark for its neighborhood with its Art Deco inspired style. Thanks to the help of the Brussels capital region, it has become one of the main cultural centers of the city. The Cajazous project from MSA Architecture is an example of the links that the neighborhood contracts tool can activate between public spaces and infrastructure, as well as public spaces and territory. The project is a case of urban acupuncture, modifying the whole urban context with one punctual element. The competition for the requalification of the former soap factory into a housing complex was won by MDW Architects in 2005. Considered as an example of urban microsurgery, it improves the living environment of the area with less dense and more green zones. The project improves the collective life of the neighborhood in which it is inserted at small and large scales. Brussels as a capital of Europe holds a wide variety of languages and cultures. The Marol neighborhood, located in the low area in the south of the Pentagon, is an example of a popular area that has always welcomed the less wealthy inhabitants of the capital which provides an interesting cultural mosaic. Brussels is the second greenest metropolis in Europe. 
green spaces are connected by the green belt, offering a wide variety of landscapes inside the city. This project promotes the soft circulation. The aim is to create a biological corridor to reach the urban biodiversity. An important element is a swine forest. It maintains a wealth of fauna and flora, and it's also an important element of the landscape around Brussels. The Brussels Mobility Network offers a wide variety of transport means with many different perceptions of the city. The main car route inside the city is a small belt. The boat is used in the economic sector for the transport of goods and for some touristic activities. To discourage the use of the car, projects are in progress to try and promote cycling, walking and the use of public transport. The green belt makes it possible to discover the great diversity of Brussels landscapes by bike or by foot. The idea is to convert important axes into bicycle and pedestrian paths. However, today, these interventions are still poorly executed. The canal area is part of the city that used to be mainly devoted to the industrial and commercial activity. Nowadays, with the economic activity mostly concentrated on the outskirts of the city, or even outsourced to other countries with cheap workforce, the canal area is behaving like a social and territorial limit which fragments the city between the east end and the west end. This zone is facing several different problematics for making this reconversion a success. Numerous architects and urbanists are currently working on this place which is experiencing a mutation. One of the first big projects of the canal is the rehabilitation of Taxi site located in the Vergot zone. Since 2008, urban planners saw high potential of urban requalification in it. It was formerly used as transit area for goods between railway and waterway and has now been empty for 20 years. Its strategic position, close to the North Business District, and its significant surface made it a place of interest. Numerous projects were launched and brought to light the potential of the industrial area of the canal in its entirety. However, the realization of these projects is complicated because the public powers decided to make a master plan for the area after it was sold to private owners and now the conflicts of interest between them slow down the process. In 2011, the Brussels capital region set up an urbanist competition to regulate the various projects of redevelopment with French urbanist Alexandre Chemetov designated as a winner. The Plan Canal the limits a perimeter of requalification divided into six zones. Bouda, Godin, Vego, Dansac, Abartois and Bistebouc at the south end. Each zone is subject to specific projects but the whole is linked with common goals. To reduce the shortage of housing in response to the constant increase of city's population, to create employment locally by maintaining industrial activity in order to compose an urban system with short circuit and improve transport infrastructures. These goals aim to promote a functional mix for the full territory of the canal and avoid urban divisions. The upside tower is erected like a signal throughout the city. Apartments were sold very quickly and now a rather wealthy population occupies the building. Another controversial program is the shopping mall docks. Even though the mall is bringing a certain commercial activity to the Godin area at the north of the canal, it isn't falling into a short circuit nor promoting a renewal of the industrial economy alongside the canal. However, it's showing a more realistic aspect of Brussels' economic concerns in parallel of the quite utopious Plan Canal. The Abattoir de Andelech, built in the 19th century, must adopt the evolution around the canal. Its area of 12 hectares and its location make it an important local player. The project plans for a gradual intensification of the abattoir site while maintaining a mix of industrial and urban functions. The new covered market, Foodmet, is corresponding to the first stage of the master plan and was completed in 2015. This project will be competed with housing, urban farm, 
and warehouses. The communal square of Molenbeek was rehabilitated in 2014. The principle of planning of the square is to promote shared space. The intervention done by the architect is very light. The square is mostly mineral, punctuated by a few trees and rounded benches. Some other projects are taking in consideration the potential of the existing buildings alongside the canal. The idea is to cherish the generosity of existing volumes and structures. For example, the former Moulin Mille was rehabilitated into a cultural space and the reception facility for companies called Co-op. A new volume was added on top of the existing. The new added floors offer a rooftop and a panoramic view of the city. Other key projects are planned in order to reactivate the canal zone. A competition was organized to turn the former Citroën garage into a cultural center and it attracted lots of big names in the architecture field. The city gate Ninov, at the middle of the canal, is also an important point for its potential to connect the east part and the west part of the city. The canal is undergoing lots of changes and is now in constant reform. The last area in the south of the Plon Canal, Bistabouk, is currently in the focus of discussions of Brussels' urbanistic reflections. The canal makes a bend there before widening considerably. The process of gentrification, which began in this district, is slow and still not very visible at this time. Indeed, the conflicts of the interest are frequent between urbanists, housing promoters and private owners. The projects achieved in accordance with the requirements of Shemitov's plan are exceptions. The eastern shore is particularly marked by the industrial presence. The urban fabric of low density is composed of big volumes connected by a basic system of roads. This industrial area is bounded on one hand by the canal and on the other hand by the railroad which creates an urban fracture between Bistebouk, Saint-Gilles and the forest districts. The question is posed, is there a solution to reconnect these territories while preserving the railroad infrastructure? The industries are less present on the west shore where the scale of the urban fabric decreases significantly. We can find there the Iloferme typology and a vertical housing complex in the south area. The goal for the future is to integrate Bistebouk into the Brussels urban fabric. Following the ideas of the Plon Canal, the main concern of the area would be to create a functional mixity, add harmoniously new housing complexes while keeping the presence of the small and heavy industries.